Welcome to the David and Anita Doubt Indoor Sports Center. I say it all the time, but is it a great day to be a Red Hawk? This is an amazing day for Miami Athletics. As you've wandered around the uh, Dow Indoor Sports Center, you've seen our teams uh, and just a small section of what they can do with this building. Uh, from somebody that has been a part of Miami University Athletics for almost 30 years, I know how long this building has been talked about. And to see it come to fruition and the future plans for this program, it has not been any better time to be a Miami Red Hawk. And I'm very proud to be your MC this afternoon for our short ceremony as we have our ribbon cutting to officially open this facility here this afternoon. We have a lot of people to get to, and a lot of people are here. I know I've talked to a lot of football alums that are here, a lot of other sports alums are here. We couldn't be happier to have this number of people here today to see this building. You know, things like this building don't happen overnight, obviously. It's been a while coming, but to see it come as quickly as it did means that there was somebody out there championing, championing I get the word here, right? Being the champion for the cause and getting this done. And that man is our director of athletics. I mean, we've had people come in and say, we got to get this done. But this man came in and said, look, this is priority one, this is priority two. And you take a look and every one of them have gotten done. And this was a huge priority. To begin our program here this afternoon, please welcome our director of athletics, David Saylor. All right, thank you, Bake. And uh, it is awesome to see all the people here today. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate this special day for us. And I gotta tell you, I did not lose one ounce of sleep last night about this facility, despite the rain, <laughs> right? Because this is what it's here for, days like this where our team can still get done what they need to get done, all of our student athletes, and it's just an awesome, awesome occasion. Um, there's a lot of people to thank, so I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can and, and talk through this as quick as I can and make sure I get everybody. I did want to start out, though, by thanking my family. My wife, Katie, and my two boys, Connor and Liam, are here, and I've been traveling a lot fundraising. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to them for understanding missing some of the baseball games and soccer games and, and all the stuff my wife does. She's truly a hero. Thank you. You know, time moves quickly. It's hard to believe that it was just a year ago, right at that 50-yard line, right there about the M, that, that Coach Harbaugh, Chuck, myself, President Hodge, Tom Herbert, we actually put shovels in the ground in April for this facility. You think about those nine months, you know, they're pretty fast turnaround structure to get this thing built. We actually didn't put shovels in the ground probably till about July. And to have this open in February for our student athletes to use it, and get after a little bit when we all know the, w the winter was pretty tough, right? And to get them in here in February and get this building done in about eight months is a, certainly a, a priority that we had and getting it done is certainly something special to celebrate. I'm proud to say that our student athletes have been making good use of the disc, as we call it, the Dow Indoor Sports Center, for nearly three months now. I'm excited for the student body here at Miami to start taking advantage of the facility as well. Recreation, club sports, and intramurals will be using it in the evenings. I'm also anxious for the community to start engaging and using the facility as well going forward now that we've gotten it kind of officially ribbon cutting happening today. Those things are coming. The, ch the fact that we're here is truly a credit to all those who worked hard to move the construction along. I'd like to thank a few of those people that are here. Cody Powell from PFD. John Seibert from PFD here at Miami, and Kevin Morris, who was the project manager for Miami on, the, on this project. I have to thank Steve Cady, our senior associate AD, who was down here every single day, bird dogging everybody, making sure that everything was just the way it needed to be. And I want to thank the architects from Ratio Architects and the construction firm of Turner Construction for all their work as well. Um, Next up is Jude Killey. This building would not be happening if not for Jude Killey's support and his uh, commitment to fundraising with me to make this happen. So Jude, I thank you for, for all your work. And Kiana Smith has been very active in getting our coaches programmed to use the structure, our practice schedules, getting people on and off the facility. Chase Speaks 
his office is over there, and he has been in here every day since this building opened, making sure that teams are getting off and on, times they're supposed to, and most importantly to me, that they're putting their stuff away. <laughs> if you notice, there were two things I told the architect about this building I wanted to achieve, and one was to have it be bright and airy, and I wanted to have storage, because I've seen a lot of these indoor facilities that look like someone's basement in terms of things on the sides and the corners and all that. And so I appreciate Chase and all his diligence making sure those things don't happen. More than bricks and mortar though, this building is really the result of a lot of support the university has provided intercollegiate athletics. I've been very fortunate to enjoy that support and feel that support since I came here in 2013. I'd like to thank the Board of Trustees for their support in advancing the new vision for Miami Athletics. And I'd personally like to thank three of our trustees that are here today, Jag Dishbati, Dennis Lieberman, and Sharon Mitchell. I thank you guys for your support. It means a lot. Thank you. I'd also personally like to thank David Kramer, our senior associate, our senior, and he's not an athletic department employee, our senior vice president for finance and business services for his leadership and support and guidance through this project. He's been unbelievable to work with and I thank him for his time. Most importantly though, I would like to thank Dr. David Hodge, Miami's president, for sharing in and supporting our vision for intercollegiate athletics and how it should be here at Miami University. We're fortunate to have a president who understands the power of student athlete experience firsthand from his time as a track and field student athlete at McAllister College. It's now my privilege to welcome Dr. Hodge to the podium to share some thoughts with you as well. Thank you. Thank you, David, and good afternoon, everyone. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. All right, let's get the spirit rolling here. It's an important thing. The most important thing I have to say is one of the things I've come to appreciate about athletics at Miami University is how integrated it is into the university. There are many places where athletes are off on the side and so forth, but here the term student athlete has real meaning and the entire community benefits from, from that exchange. It starts with facilities like this, which, which by the way is just a phenomenal, phenomenal facility. It's, there are a lot of, most campuses now in D1 have something like this. Few, few, if any, have the brightness, the welcoming, and God, red and white, such a great color combination. It's just a fabulous, fabulous facility. But one of the exciting things about it, as David said, it's not just a facility that our student athletes are going to use, it's a facility that, that our community is going to use, our students are going to use, and intramurals, club sports, and so forth. And that's a really a hallmark, again, of the integration of this. It also is a result of another kind of interaction, and that's the interaction with our alumni and friends. And I want to express my deep gratitude to everyone who's made this possible and who in every way supports athletics at Miami University. As you know, these are, these are challenging times financially for universities and for our students, and your support is the difference between being able to participate and being able to be champions. And I thank you deeply for being able to do that. But most of all, I want to highlight what this means for our student athletes. Our student athletes are incredible individuals who commit themselves on the field or on the ice or whatever else to the, most, the highest levels of excellence, but they also do it in the classroom. And as they do this, they project the spirit of Miami. They tell to the world what a Miami student is all about, what the aspirations, what the drive is all about. Those are qualities that are distinctive. We recently had an, an example of that with our hockey team playing in the regionals. The outcome wasn't what we like, but most of you have now probably seen that extraordinary moment when one of our players skated down the ice, threw everything that he had to deflect the puck at the last second, hits the post, goes off, and without regard to himself, he smashes into the wall, dislocating his shoulder, and then hobbles to the bench to get off because he knew the next player had to come on. That indomitable spirit, that drive, says everything to the world about Miami. Our student athletes, in everything they do, in every way they stand, send the signal for what makes Miami special. So to all of you student athletes, first of all, we're delighted that we're able to add to your ability to be champions through facilities like this. But we're also delighted by all that you do to represent that spirit that we call Miami. Love and honor, thank you.
Thank you, President Hodge. As the President mentioned, my name is Haley Walter, and I'm a midfielder and team captain of the Miami women's soccer team. It's a privilege to stand up here today on behalf of my Miami women's soccer teammates and all of Miami's 500 plus student athletes. I'm a third generation Miamian. My dad, Craig, is a 1978 graduate, and my grandpa, Bucky Walter, is a 1950 graduate who played football, ran track, and was inducted into the Miami Athletics Hall of Fame. He's actually here today, and I bet as he walked into this building, he thought about how far we've come since his days of the bamboo pole vault poles and sawdust pits underneath the bleachers of the stadium. I grew up knowing a lot about this amazing university in Oxford and its fine athletic tradition, and now I'm grateful to say that I've been able to experience that myself both as a student and an athlete. I'm benefiting from tremendous experience in the classroom as a middle childhood education major that is preparing me for that next chapter in my life. And I've also been able to be a part of the Miami women's soccer program that has finished near the top of the Mid-American Conference each of my first three seasons and which won a MAC championship and an NCAA tournament game my first year. Miami Athletics has adopted the mission of graduating champions and just over a year from now, I will graduate a champion. Miami soccer also has its own mission statement that dedicates us to fulfilling our greatest potential. That is what drives us every day and we are supported in so many ways by so many people. Our coaches, our sports medicine staff, our strength and conditioning coaches, our professors, our athletic department, and university leadership. Everyone here wants and invests in our success. I learned another side of that investment this February when my teammates and I first stepped foot in this beautiful facility. Previously, our off-season workouts had involved trying to play soccer on a basketball court or getting that 7 a.m. text saying, it's 20 degrees, we're practicing outside, dress accordingly. To say that the David and Anita Dauk Indoor Sports Center has changed our off-season preparation is a serious understatement. Having a full field with a great surface to run on has not only done wonders for our conditioning, but it has also allowed us to implement new systems and practice key elements that simply weren't possible in a confined space or on a frozen surface. Our preparation has taken a major leap forward and I can't wait to see what that will mean for us on the field next fall. Thank you to David and Anita Dauk and all those who have invested in us and our desire to fulfill our greatest potential. Your support is an inspiration and a reminder of what we owe those future Red Hawks who will carry on what we have built here. Thank you. Thank you, Haley. Well, first off, they told me a few people are gonna be here and obviously it's more than a few, so I'm a little nervous right now, not gonna lie. But my name is Heath Harding. I'm the voice of the Miami Red Hawks. Sorry, Steve Baker, didn't mean that. Yeah. Yeah. Still your shine like that. But, <laughs> hey, my bad, my bad. But I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I play defensive back here for the Miami football team. Uh, I would like to begin where Haley left off. Uh, on the first day of conditioning uh, for winter workouts, temperature was in the teens, wind were blowing, snow was on the ground. Man, I honestly didn't even want to leave my dorm room, but didn't want to have to deal with Harker afterwards, so <laughs> sucked it up. But as I walked into the big, beautiful, warm facility that is the indoor, I knew I needed to thank someone in a big way. So on behalf of Miami football and my fellow student athletes, I would like to thank David, Anita Dow, Ben Roethlisberger, and John Harbaugh for their support. <laughs> it's even more meaningful knowing that so many of these so many of those who support this facility competed, sacrificed in the, same in the same stadium that my teammates and I sweat in throughout the year. The bonds here are so strong that it might even bring the Ravens and the Steelers together. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> or just for today, just for today. I'm glad you guys laughed at my joke. I was worried about that. <laughs> uh, whenever we walked, <laughs> Miami is a school of great tradition. Whenever we uh, walk, through the, walk to our coach's office, we pass numerous photos of all the great coaches that passed through Miami and the countless and endless number of rows of Miami uh, MAC players. So we're reminded of the great and incredible tradition that Miami football has. Um, Miami takes great pride in that tradition 
and Miami football takes great pride in representing that tradition on and off the field. There's, there's one problem with that tradition though. We don't just want to respect it, we want to add something to it. Haley talked about the success that her and her soccer teammates have enjoyed and talked about graduating champions. I want that, my teammates want that. And I can't begin to say how difficult these past two seasons have been, but we're ready to, we're ready to change it and prove everyone wrong this season and add something to that tradition. Uh, Coach Martin and the staff has re-energized us and refocused us on our goal to win a championship. My teammates and I are scratching and crawling, as Coach Martin would say, in practice every single day. You got to scratch and crawl, claw, but hey, that's Coach, to get better. But all across the university, from President Hodge to Mr. Saylor and on down, people are showing their support on behalf of and their, and their belief in us. The David and Anita Dowd Indoor Sports Center is another symbol of that great support for Miami football and Miami athletics. We have been able to practice and condition in ways that have never previously been possible. There's a big difference between running on the treadmills and cutting, doing cuts and doing drills on the actual field. And you can ask these guys over here. Me and the treadmill, we don't get along very well. So I'm thankful for this indoor facility. Um, and we have the time, and we also get a chance to put in that extra work, rain or shine, or no matter what the conditions are, since we have, since we have this new indoor. I'm so fortunate to get to play this game I love at the school that I've grown to love. I'm proud to be a part of this amazing team and tradition and know this is such an amazing time for Miami athletics. Thank you to everyone that came out today. Hope you guys enjoy the spring game. Cheer for us at some point. Now, please welcome back Athletic Director David Saylor. All right. so. Quick thank you to Haley and Heath. I don't know, you know a lot more I could say, but, but you see what we're here for, right? You see the quality of the kind of kids that this institution produces, and it's just a special, special place. And it's awesome to see all the student athletes that are here and, and their outfits and everything else and the commitment. They, this is why we do what we do. And to be able to provide this for them is just unbelievable. Uh, it really is. It is about the student athletes here at Miami. We talk about graduating champions. That's our hope for every young man and young woman that walks through these doors, that they'll have the guidance and support from our athletic program to actually graduate a champion from this institution. Always keeping in mind our guiding principles of teamwork, focus, attitude, tenacity, and integrity. Those are things we talk about here at Miami and push for and strive for every day. Today, I'm excited to announce that Miami University has officially launched the Graduating Champions Campaign to improve our athletic facilities and increase scholarship support for all of our student athletes. So not only with the opening of the indoor today, it's just unbelievable that we're going to announce this campaign. I'm pleased to announce that we are already more than halfway towards our $80 million goal for the Graduating Champions campaign. Our generous alumni, friends, and partners have, as of today, given $49 million to this effort. And it goes without saying that we already are seeing the impact of the support that this David and Anita Dowk Indoor Sports Center and other projects that have been completed or in construction are making on the lives of our student athletes. You can't start a campaign without visionary leadership and I've been humbled by the generosity and commitment of alumni and friends who have shared in this vision during my two plus years here. Some of those great advocates of Miami are represented today. And I would personally like to thank and recognize them, Randy and Vicki Gunlock and the Gunlock family. I see Bill and Sandy here. Thank you guys for being here. Um, we recently announced a, a, an alliance with Mercy Health. I want to thank them for their support as well. The family of Papa Joe Hayden, including Jay Hayden, who is graciously agreed to be the chair of our steering committee for the Graduating Champions campaign. Thank you. We also greatly appreciate the support of our partners across campus and university advancement and the University Foundation who have supported today's event and the entire campaign rollout. Folks over there that I'd like to recognize are the Vice President for University Advancement, Tom Herbert, 
Senior Associate Vice President for Development, Brad Bundy, as well as staff members Kim Tavares, Vince Frieden, and Andrew Sander. Also, the Miami Athletics Development Team, Coleman Barnes, Brenda Birch, Patrick Ransdell, Scott Usher. Thank you all. I told you guys I had a lot of people to thank, but I think I'm about, about out on that side of it. All this momentum for this campaign started right here, the groundbreaking we had last year. When I arrived at Miami, the need for a year-round all-weather practice facility, facility was echoed universally everywhere I went, every donor I spoke with. It's actually pretty amazing to think about Steve Cady and I having a conversation yesterday that in 1995, Eric Hyman, the athletic director at that time, listed this facility as his number one project in his master plan for Miami Athletics. 20 years later, we're here today and we finally got it done. And it's awesome. It took too long, frankly, but the fact that we've been able to do it and pull it off is something for everyone to be proud of. As Haley and Heath both indicated, the completion of this facility was a statement to our support of our student athletes. It was also an important statement about our commitment of what comes next here at Miami with athletics. The images of the steel rising up out of the ground on this project became a starting point from which we've been able to rally enthusiasm and support from more and more alumni, friends, and partners. It was so amazing. Chuck and I, every day we'd come out and we'd count the steel beams going up, right? There's eight, there's 10, there's 12. Every day we enjoy doing that together. The steel coming up out of the ground allowed me to send pictures to other alums and show them the progress we were making and talk about the thing that this is actually happening, right? Here's proof, guys, this is it. The more steel that fans got to see every Saturday they came out to watch us play, they could see the facility getting bigger and bigger and all that momentum building up was just such a special thing to see. It created a huge sense of momentum within our athletic program. We owe that momentum to those who stepped forward with major gifts to build this facility. And I would like to recognize those donors, a number of them who are here today. Kurt Allison and Ron Bunger from G&J Pepsi, Trey and Mindy Bush, Tom and Jan Hasfurther, Peter and Betsy Moak, Tom and Liz Parrott, Bob and Andrea Simpson. Thank you all for your support of this project. Three other donors are up here today with me and they'll share their thoughts here in a moment but I would certainly like to give them special thanks. Thank you guys for your support. It says a lot about this day, this project, this institution, and the bond that it holds to its alumni that John Harbaugh and Ben Roethlisberger, as busy as they are, and trust me, this time of year is busy, they've made effort to fly in here today and show their support to this institution. Both are ma also major donors to this project, and we appreciate their investment, but just as much for me, I appreciate their engagement with the program and getting them involved in what we're doing going forward. It's a really exciting time for us. I also want to thank the entire Roethlisberger family for making the trip over. Thank you guys for being here. It's great to have Ashley here with her children, Ben and Bailey, as well as Penn's, Ben's parents, Ken and Brenda. It's an honor to have you all here. Thank you very much. And finally, we're pleased to be joined today by David and Anita Dauk, along with three of their four children that are here, Zach, Charlie, and Lindsay. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> David is a CEO who recognized early on that our athletic facilities were falling behind the times. He and Anita were among the first to lead by example and make an investment in the Indoor Sports Center. They later came back and made a second, larger gift to ensure the naming of the David and Anita Dauk Indoor Sports Center. It's my honor to now invite David Dauk, a member of Miami's 1986 MAC Championship football team and a dedicated Miami alumnus, and more importantly to me, a friend, to come up and share his remarks. Thank you so much.
What a great day this is. Well, first of all, David, thank you for your kind words and your introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, truly an honor and a pleasure for me to be in front of you uh, to address this wonderful day that we have and this game-changing moment for Miami football, for Miami athletics, and for Miami University. As I said, today's an exciting day for Miami, Miami athletics, as we're here today to celebrate this spectacular new and much needed facility. Before I begin my remarks, I'm gonna introduce my beautiful wife, Anita. And thank her for unconditional support and love over the years, because I couldn't be where I am today without her. So thanks, babe. And then there's a small story behind it. I met my wife outside of the locker room at Jaeger Stadium 30 years ago to the day. So it's a fantastic thing. So. So, so as David alluded, I've got three of my four children here today, so I'd like to take the time to introduce them because they're part of the family and part of the commitment uh, here to Miami. So if I could, I'd like our oldest son, Zach, if you'd please stand and stay standing. Uh, Zach's a University of Michigan graduate and former lacrosse player. Uh, next is our third son, Charlie. Uh, Charlie's a freshman baseball player here at Miami. And finally, our daughter, Lindsay, who's a junior in high school, and hopefully there's a Red Hawk in her future as well. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, our middle son, Luke, couldn't be with us here today as he's a senior baseball player at Northwestern University, and he's presently in season. So kids, again, thank you for your unconditional love and support as well. And uh, oh, by the way, get a good education because we just spent your inheritance. <laughs> so, so as an ex-student athlete and alumnus of Miami University, I've always felt an emotional attachment to this fine school. Many of my best friends today are guys that I played football with here, classmates I attended school with, fraternity brothers I socialized with, or other friends I met along the way, many of which are here today providing their support. And Anita and I thank you dearly and deeply for that support. As all of you know, Miami is a very special place, a hidden gem a place that once experienced the second to none. That's why it was easy for Anita and me to get further involved in an effort to enhance the Miami experience. An experience that begins with our student body, recognizes our outstanding faculty, expands our athletic community, touches the local community of Oxford itself, and is led by our fine administration, beginning here with President David Hodge. And David, I thank you. Over the years, President Hodge and I have had a lot of discussions about the Miami brand and what do we need to do to strengthen it going forward. Initiatives like the Farmer School of Business, the new Armstrong Student Center, and the recent upgrades to the athletic or to the uh, uh, dormitories and the residence halls are just a few ex examples and improvements that continue to enhance this fine institution. However, with that being said, we still lack the modern athletic facilities that we need to compete at the Division I level, and today is the beginning of making that change. It is with this in mind, coupled with my son Luke's recruiting experience of the past, that I decided to personally get more involved and work directly with the university to step up their commitments to athletics and balance it with our academic prowess here at Miami. After many discussions with the athletic department, assorted coaches along the way, including with Coach Chuck Martin, it became very apparent to me that Miami needed an indoor facility, an indoor center for our student athletes and our athletic teams to compete on the national level. With the rapid expansion of various media forms, including TV and cable and internet, satellite, and most, most recently the conference networks that have uh, expounded upon us, the front porch of many universities is the athletic community. And right or wrong, it's a fact of reality and we must adjust to the changing marketplace or we're gonna get left behind. And let me be clear, our student athletes are here first to get an outstanding education from a premier university with distinguished faculty. But we must also keep in mind 
that we afforded these same student athletes the opportunity to extend their athletic careers here at Miami, and we owe it to them to provide them the resources and the facilities to compete at that national level. And that's what this facility and many of the other facilities are all about as we move forward. So in other words, we need to strike that fine balance between academics and athletics, and, and that's the reason why they're called student athletes. I, along with many other student athletes before me and after me, are classic examples of what hard work, commitment, dedication, and teamwork stand for, not only in the classroom, but also on the athletic fields or on the, or on the athletic courts. I'm a true believer that the effort you put into your work into your school and into your academics will make a difference in whether you're successful or not. And let me be very clear, especially to you students, life in the real world is no different. So Anita and I are honored to have been given the opportunity to work closely with both President David Hodge and Athletic Director David Saylor on the future of Miami Athletics and on this exciting project. Our goal was to provide a state-of-the-art facility that our student athletes could train in year round, thus elevating that athletic experience here at Miami. We also feel that this facility will greatly, greatly, greatly enhance recruiting efforts. So Coach Martin, let's get it done. <laughs> most, of, most importantly, we wanna build on the winning heritage and traditions that go along with Miami here. This differentiating project, along with the other uh, athletic facility projects that are currently planned or already underway, will elevate the mission of, my, of Miami Athletics to graduate champions, as you already heard from David Saylor earlier. To all of you alumni that are here in attendance today, as well as our current student athletes, I ask that each of you make a personal commitment to yourselves to either stay involved or get involved with Miami. Join the Red and White Club. Contribute to the recently announced uh, athletic uh, graduating champion campaign that David just kicked off here today. Or donate to the greater good of the university, whether that's the love and honor campaign of the past or a new and different campaign to be announced sometime in the future. The important thing to note is Miami needs your help and your support more today than ever, ever before, so please get involved. Before closing, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize select individuals and key individuals for their outstanding support and their aligned passion along the way. First, from the Athletic Department, Athletic Director David Saylor, as well as Associate Athletic Director and Athletic Development, Jude Killey. These two men, this has been absolutely outstanding for Anita and I to work with. They've got a great vision for Miami Athletics and they're actively delivering on their plan. So we're actually putting word, not only, uh, we're putting reality behind the words that have been spoken about this facility, like we said, dating back to 1995. Well guys and gals, it's here today and it's a reality and that's much more coming based on the plans that I've seen and what the, what the university is working on. So David and Jude and the whole athletic team, please keep up what you guys are doing. And second from the development office, Mr. Tom Herbert. Tom, I'm not sure where you are out here, but I saw you earlier. Tom, thank you personally for your support in assisting Anita and I in finding a financial medium to administer and, and assist us in our gift. And third, to John Harbaugh and Ben Roethlisberger, who are up here with me, for making a meaningful difference through, the, through your public leadership, through your personal gifting on this project, and most importantly, for your continued support and commitment to Miami University. So thank you. And finally, to President David Hodge, for your professionalism, for your leadership, for your willingness to listen, for your final approval on this project, along with that of the Miami Board of Trustees. And I thank you all for your unconditional support and for making our collective vision a reality. I'd also like to recognize my parents for being the best role models that Anita and I could ever ask for. They taught Anita and I, or Anita and me, excuse me, or my wife will correct me on that, the real meaning of the five F's, our faith, our family, our friends, our future, and our freedom. Most importantly, they taught us the greatest joy in life is giving. So as I mentioned earlier, Anita and I are deeply honored and humbled 
to participate in this exciting project and dedication ceremony. Our commitment to giving back facilitated the construction of the Dauk Indoor uh, Sports Center, which will have a lasting effect on generations to come. So all of you out there, all you student athletes, enjoy your new home, love and honor, and thank you. Thank you so much, Anita, thank you so much. And at this time, it's my distinct pleasure and great honor to introduce a good friend of mine, an ex-teammate of mine, the last inductee into the Miami Cradle of Coaches, and head coach of the NFL Baltimore Ravens, Mr. John Harbaugh. David Dow, David and Anita. Thank you very much for what you've done. Uh, who would have thought how many years ago when you came down here from Michigan and we got lined up with each other on a recruiting visit that it would turn into all this? Who would have ever thought? That's the amazing thing about, about, about college athletics, about the academic experience that we have, but more than anything about Miami. And I couldn't be more proud to say that I'm the guy that recruited this guy here all those years ago. And he was a great player. The only, the only thing tougher than following that speech was lining up against the guy in practice every day and having him knock you off the ball. So great football player and a great friend of Miami. And thankful, thank you for what you've both done for all of us. We appreciate it tremendously. Uh, to the players, look at this crowd. Look at this crowd in this facility right now. I got to tell you, coming in here, you know, I was excited. I couldn't wait to come back and see my buddies, my guys who are here, and see David and see my, my buddy over here who I got to see twice every year, and usually three times every year, and he's a great family. But I didn't really expect to see this. I don't know why. Why wouldn't you expect to see so many people out here who love Miami and who want to be a part of what's been and what's coming ahead of us? Thanks for being here. I mean, pat yourself on the back, look to the guy next to you and say thanks for being here, the guy or the gal. This is what it's all about. This is where we're going. Really, really, the value of all this is in the relationships. So, so like, I came back and saw my guys who were standing right over there who we played with, uh, and I saw these guys right over here, and I mingled with those guys, and it's like, dude, we're, we're like 19 years old again being back here. We're back right where we were 30-some years ago, okay? Right on this very same spot. We practiced on this field, right? Not this field, exactly. It was a slightly different field. There was actually cows out in the back, right, David? <laughs> There was no stadium, but we walked down here and practiced and hear how far it's come and what you get a chance to do. What, a, what an honor, all right? And I know love and honor, you're loving being out here, right? But it's just a tool. It's just a tool and it's what you do with it, all right? It's no different than when they lined up that cow pasture 100 yards long and 53 and a third yards wide. This cow pasture right here is a lot nicer, but it's the same length, it's the same width. Come out here and have a, have a practice. Come out here and have a scrimmage and get after it, all right? And do us all proud and I know you will. You're a good looking football team. Great looking football team. One guy and the experiences of every player, every athlete, every student athlete is all individual. You all have a story to tell, right? We all have a story to tell. And one guy I just want to mention is Jack Glock, who lined up every practice against Randy Gunlock. And every time I see him, he complains about going up against you in every single practice. He thinks you did damage to him permanently. But you guys went at it every single day. He's one of our scouts. I think he epitomizes Miami as much more than anybody. But nobody epitomizes Miami more than the, than the guy that I'm going to get a chance to introduce here. It's a guy that, uh, that I'm really happy to see in the spring and really sad to see in the fall. But, but we have great moments, don't we? And before the game, before the game, every time, you know, I'm, I'm standing in midfield and I'm looking for the big tall guy wearing number seven. I can't believe how many number seven Steelers jerseys are here, by the way. How about a couple Ravens jerseys, you know? But yes. They should be here. And there he is, man. He's throwing BBs all over the field. He's just looking so great, you know. And I'm like, oh, man, you got to go against this guy again, you know. But what an honor. 
you know, to, to have, and he comes over and we shake hands. And what we talk about every single time, we talk about Miami. And we talk about how they did on Saturday and who they're playing next week and it's about some of our buddies and stuff like that. And that's a bond, even though we played in two different eras, that we share. No better man, no better competitor, speaking from firsthand knowledge, than, than Ben Roethlisberger, one of the elite players in the history of the game and one of the toughest guys you're ever going to have to go against, who's been an instrumental part in putting this whole thing together, somebody we're very, very proud of, Ben Roethlisberger. No Baltimore, Pittsburgh today, it's just Miami, right? I'll keep this short because I know you football players want to get going, get your pads on forever now. Um, and I'm, I'm glad we got this done so I don't have to get so many texts and calls and emails from David anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they'll still come, but, um, you know, this is such an awesome facility. I'm so proud that, um, and Coach, you probably deal with this too, but when scouts and coaches come and watch pro days and come see this and they come up to me and they say, Wait till you see that facility. It's better than a lot of NFL ones. It's better than almost every college facility in the country. And to me, that makes me proud to know that Miami has this because I didn't have it. Coach talks about toughness. Part of the reason we we're so tough is we had to practice outside on an AstroTurf field hockey field when it rained. And I'll never forget some of you, uh, my teammates that are here and, and, and coaches and whoever's back. Uh, you know, when, the, when it was raining, we saw Coach Dalrymple and Coach Hepner. They would stand out there and they'd be looking up at the weather. And we'd be standing under Jaeger Stadium watching the rain and waiting for it to practice in our gray shorts, right? We didn't have any Nikes at the time. We wore the grays. And waiting for, for the weather report from our, our head coach and our strength coach. And um, to have this is truly awesome. Think of the places we could have went when, uh, if we would have had this. And I'm um, so thankful to, to David and Anita for, for this. This is awesome. And um, you open the door. I'll say it. Coach, you have no excuse now. You've got a great facility like this. Uh, keep it going now, okay? Uh, and lastly, I'd like to thank my family for being here. Uh, it's so awesome to have you guys here to support me and uh, my two children. And my daughter's having a good time playing with the grass, I guess. So um, thank you all very much. Thank you to everybody, the president, athletic directors, everybody that, that helped get this going. So um, let's have a good football season. All right. Thanks. Just about time to cut the ribbon. Uh, do want to make mention of another uh, donor that is here, and uh, also you know, I, I was talking to her earlier today. Uh, the late Randy Walker, uh, you know, was was one of those guys. He loved practicing outside, and if you played for Coach Walker, you know it didn't matter about the weather. But he would love this building. I'm telling you that Tammy Walker is here, and I want to give her a round of applause as well. For, thank you for your help in this building as well. All right, Heath Haley, and by the way. You are the best voice on the football team, no doubt about it. No doubt, brother. Come on up here. I'm going to have you guys stretch this out if you don't mind. Everybody else can step up to the...